like follow subscribe click the notification button join the look up tv movement now 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 And welcome. Thank you so much for staying with Look Up TV. Now, the World Health Organization defines mental health as a state of well-being in which every individual realizes his or her own potential, can cope with the normal stresses of life, can work productively and fruitfully, and is able to make a contribution to her or his community. In a report on the world mental health situation in Kenya, Kenya has been ranked as number five in African countries with the highest number of depression cases. Moreover, the mental health task force report shows that there exist high levels of depression and suicidal behavior high levels of mental distress and substance use in kenya this is the big idea and today in the program we are talking about addressing the worrying state of mental health in the country with me on set right next to me is rose uh, grace to I beg your pardon a I tour know. consultant and on the other end dorothy kemonto a psychologist. Welcome, ladies. Thank you. Thank you. And let's talk about mental health. Now more than ever, we have started having the conversations. But is it working? There is a worrying trend. Over 400 suicide cases since the year started. Actually, between June and now, yeah. over 400 cases yeah, sure. of suicide. So the, the, there's obviously a clear sign that there is a problem. There is a mental illness, there are mental difficulties within Kenyans as a people. So if I can start with you, Dorothy, are we addressing this issue? Because we have been talking about it for a while. We know that it exists. Thank you for having me. Uh, my first take would be, I don't think we're doing what we're supposed to do. I think uh, the issue around mental health remains a taboo within the community and I don't feel like we're able to give sufficient information or accessible information towards the whole country or the people who need it. So I think there's more that can be done in so many different angles within our social, economical and political angles so that we can actually make it fast. People are able to embrace the topic People are able to have conversations around the topic. And then we can now start discussing how to really, really come and, and target the problem and slay the problem mm. if we're able to so do that. Do you think that people don't know about mental health enough? I don't think people don't know about mental health. I think people are aware. I think it's just a shameful subject. We, we, we've not made it... Uh, an open discussion that you can say, hey, I don't feel okay. Hey, my, I feel like I'm not able to sleep well. And you associate that with something like stress, maybe anxiety. And those are mental related concerns. When we, we, we talk about mental health, it's uh, you're a crazy person, you're going to the stigmatized hospital, which is Mathare. If you're not able to put your thoughts together or you're not able to hold yourself together, especially if we talk about the boy child, you're not supposed to cry, you're not supposed to feel any emotion. So I think we're raising uh, individuals who are emotionless. And if we're not able to actually put this topic out there in the open and tell people it's okay to feel the way you feel and it's okay to not be okay, then it remains an issue that might never be addressed properly. So we need to understand the root cause of some of these things. Okay. Yes, that's my take. Okay, Grace and... Tours consultant, yeah. and when we talk about tourism, then I think about the COVID-19 and how the tourism sector yeah, yeah. has been one of the most affected. Yeah. So I, I, I don't know if you are affected. I don't know if you <laughs> the axe fell on you, but maybe you can tell us about that. But just how even COVID-19 has exposed just how people are actually very stressed out, anxious, depressed, suicidal. Uh, thank you for having me. Um, as, a, as a tour consultant, the way you've said whether the acts was on me or other people, um, speaking from um, that angle, 
I think the most affected um, is that sector, and I think I'm one of those who are affected. I think for me, um, we stopped working two weeks after COVID came, and then you're here, you're home, you don't know what is next for you, and uh, there's a lot of fear, there's a lot of anxieties, and then what? And then um, you're, you're, you're really into a situation that you don't really understand who you are or what is going to happen. But as um, or maybe, maybe me or other people in the same industry, let's say their mental is really affected because if you're used to wake up in the morning and then you, you know there's a place that I'm going and then you don't have the same income again and you don't even know where next, then you can imagine the way it is. So I think COVID has really affected this. And uh, the, the only worst thing is that um, is speaking out. Like you don't even know how, how to speak it out. Because the only thing you do is you isolate yourself or maybe um, you just want to be alone. You, the only thing you can console yourself is you eat like your life depends on it. Or else maybe um, you get detached from the things you used to do. Maybe if, if you used to maybe to swimming, it's not an interest to you anymore. The things that you used to do, the things that you used to make you happy, mm. now you, you don't find interest. And some other people, like, the people who don't even bathe, you feel like bathing is a bother to you. So COVID has really affected this in a very, very big way. Okay. Thank you. And Dorothy, now what are really are, are the signs? Maybe if you can... If you can just tell us, I know she's spoken about a, a few of them, yes. but as of right now, yes. you know, we just want to break down the issue because these are real issues and we, we face them, people around us, our sisters, our brothers, our mothers, our friends, that's what we have seen. So what are these signs, very basic signs that maybe we can observe to know that someone is not okay? Um. First, we need to understand that emotions are centered around feelings of joy, happiness, sadness, surprise, anxiety, anticipation. All these things are supposed to trigger a certain feeling from you as an individual. So when these elements interlink together, that's when we bring issues like love and we hope, you know, matters that make you want to look. If, if you look at anticipation, it's either you are anxious or you're hopeful. So when we look at issues like uh, the COVID, for instance, uh, Toku here, what she has undergone, I think the first thing is uh, there was a lot of fear when COVID was first mm -hmm. announced in this country and people panicked and you could see this with uh, people running to get sanitizers and gloves and thinking the world was ending yeah. oh. and tissues. <laughs> I really understand the issue around issues. Yeah. But yeah. you could see that panic, and that tells you as a human being, those are emotions. And these emotions were not controlled because the people who were giving us the information did not put aside like a forum whereby people are being told it's going to be okay. And you know, your hope is maybe in two weeks, the country will open up again. In three months, the country will open up again. And we're still in the same state right now. And we have so many unemployed people that we don't want to address. And these people are going through things because their lives, yes, the job stopped, but their lives did not stop. You still have to feed your family. You still have to, to bathe, you know, something like that. But if your motivation for bathing was to go to work, now you stop everything that was related to work. If it's bathing, then go to work, then now you don't want to go to work. Eating is a form of coping mechanism, which is also something that we do not address, because if you're on a healthier diet or exercise regimen, yeah. then you're able to also control your, your, your hormones. You know about dopamine, mm -hmm. you know about oxytocin and serotonin, probably. I don't know. But these are supposed to help you. They are like feel-good hormones. And these are things that we either reinforce or because we are afraid serotonin is not being produced or is sadness, so you have to eat. And the eating is not that you're eating because you're consciously eating. It's because you're trying to feel a certain fear or a certain hope, or you're excited. The people, when they're excited, they eat. The people, when they're sad, they eat. So if you don't understand the root cause, like I was saying earlier, then you're bound to make decisions that are not going to be beneficial, which means you need to be self-aware, and you need to 
accept also mm -hmm. what is happening. If it's a condition or a circumstance that, or an environment that you are in control of, then it helps you actually make better decisions. That's why psychologists and uh, counseling sessions are supposed to help you cope with this harsh, harsh kind of environment. Right. But now if you're raised in such a way that you're told if you're afraid, you're not supposed to show fear. You're not supposed to say you're afraid. That means you failed as a person. Then that means you're going to resort to drinking, smoking, just having these activities that are going to cause you more harm, that is going to escalate. Like you're in a pit hole and you can't seem to get yourself out. Okay. But if we do have a forum where people understand that this is the way to go, like you understand, like a clear cut. Let me say, for instance, if you have a stomachache, you know, you go to a certain hospital and you'll explain to a doctor, this is what I feel. Yeah and you'll be given medication. You don't question the doctor, why am I taking this? So I think when it comes to mental health, we don't approach it in the same way. Yes, you know what you're going through, but there is no forum for you to actually go and say, this is what I'm going through. Because okay. you are stigmatized. Why are you going to a psychiatrist? When people hear psychiatrists, they know you've lost it. Mm -hmm. Lose nuts, you are crazy, you're about to go naked. Mm -hmm. But those are signs of depression which were not addressed from the onset. Okay. That's what I mean. And if we just talk about Kenya as a country, right now, mm. what are the challenges that people are facing that probably are leading now to different cases of mental illnesses? Um, I, I think the cases that um, uh, Kenyans are facing, um, <clears throat> it's, it's getting hard for people to adjust. Because I think, um, like, let's say like 70% uh, were affected. So there's, there's this way that um, it's hard to adjust. Maybe your, 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 the way your lifestyle, you see. So you, you, you don't seem to, to come to a consensus that this happened. So adjustment is one, one, one of the effects that has happened. And um, I think um, we are not really into like, we can, if this didn't work, maybe you can try something out. So I think in that area, it's, it's, it's becoming so crazy. Um, because um, I, I think most of the families, um, th there's been a lot of wrangles because um, we are not ready to understand each other. Like, I lost this, and if I lost this, maybe there's something else that we can, we can, um, we can try out. So there's a, lot of, there's a lot of pain, actually. Everybody is, is having a lot of pain. And the way you're bringing out the pain is causing a lot of harm. That's why you see there's a lot of suicide that are happening. That's why you see there, there's a lot of um, suicidal that is happening. Because there's, there's so much pain in, in a lot of people. And the way, because of, we don't have people to talk to. You don't, you, because the, the next person you talk to becomes your broadcaster of the things that you're going through. So the moment you keep everything into yourself, the day it's going to come and explode, it's, it's going to come out very, very bad. And that's why we are having, like, um, the incident that happened, the guy that killed almost the whole of the family, father, mother, and the siblings, because that is untold pain, the pain that you've kept so much in yourself. And then, because you didn't have anyone to talk to, and the, I think the issue of speaking out it's because of the judgment i think there's a lot of stigma when it comes to mental health mm -hmm. because people so then what yeah. is it that we can do so yeah. we can make the environment conducive for people yeah. to actually now speak out yeah okay i think what we should do is uh, um we should not make mental health like it's a crime and it is good to I think it's it's a matter of reaching out. It's good to always reach out. Like when when maybe if we've been friends for long, there are signs you will see like the way I do things, you always think something is wrong. It's good to reach out to a friend or maybe a relative and maybe know and what is not happening and there are things people, the way I said, withdrawal. There are people you see maybe they were on social media, they've withdrawn. Maybe they used to hang around, they want to be by themselves. So it is good to reach out. And then maybe let us make it like our own burden. Like let us do a mobilization and an awareness. We, we, we teach people that this thing happened. Even if it doesn't happen to you direct, 
it will happen to your child and it will affect you indirect. So it is within us every day. That is a fact that we should accept and that is how it is. Okay. Yeah. And could we then say that the, our, the state of the economy is one contributor to the cases of mental illness that are rampant in the country? Yes, I would say the economical part is essential, but not as essential as the social angle. Mm -hmm. um, we've not taught people how to deal with failure. We've not taught people how to deal with trauma. And we're all traumatized in one way or another. When I talk about trauma, it doesn't mean necessarily pandemic related. We've been raised in a society that may be traumatized at some point, but we don't teach people how to deal with these kind of issues. Mm -hmm. And um, adding on to what she had said earlier about someone taking how his whole entire family out, I think we suffer from what I call savior complex, whereby we, we don't want to take responsibility. 99% of what happens within our space is something that is within our control. In our control, either we can prevent it from happening, or if it happens, we can seek an avenue to solve it. But once, for instance, you tell me what your problems are, you're not supposed to be entitled to me solving the problem for you, because the solutions are always within and the savior complex in that you, you, I don't expect you and you and another person to give me all your problems. I can listen, but as a good person, what should I do? I should guide you to the right channels, which means do I know a way to help you without me being burnt out? There are things I can help you solve, but there are things which are beyond me, and there are things maybe you're embarrassed to discuss with me. But if you have the right person handling this, that's why we have professionals in this field, who are handling this, then they have the right guidelines. If, for instance, your situation is beyond counseling, we have psychiatrists who can give you medication to help you. If there's, for instance, chemical imbalance in your system, they can help you actually work on your chemical balancing. So I need to know that for me to be a good friend to you. But the gentleman who took out his entire family, I can't say what caused it. But I can say, I think there were a lot of signs probably that before, were before, before the, end. the end goal. We have people in, in instances whereby, for instance, someone tells you, if you leave me, I'll kill you. And we laugh it off. That is a sick person. And we need to take it seriously. From the moment well, someone says, said, I will yeah, slaughter sure. you. Mm -hmm. When you have people who are depending on you, the savior complex, like... They, they, they just know it's you. You are the source of their happiness or their sadness. We're raising individuals, telling them, your source of pain and your source of pleasure has to be from the same person. Do you understand how complex that is? Mm -hmm. I'm the same person who's going to hurt you, but I'm the same person who's going to give you... Happiness. Happiness. Yeah, sure. You understand? Yeah. So it becomes a power shift. Like, I will hurt you, but I will also make you happy. So every time I hurt you, you're waiting for me to make you happy. That's how we are raising our people. So That's you, how we are raising children. So you're dependent. So you're dependent. So you're, dependent. you're always mm. looking for that high. It's like a drug high. Mm. We're always looking for those highs. So the pain is extreme pain. Mm. So, the happiness so your is happiness extreme is an happiness. Is an approval from someone else. Validation. Yeah. So they they, they, they have to to. I mean, they're the ones who controls. They have the remote to control when you you're supposed to be happy. But you must give someone that power control. Yeah, sure. Let's start from something as basic as... Yeah. Uh, so like, so yeah. then, how do we turn it around? We need to be self-aware. We yeah. need to self-accept who we are. You need to know who you are every day. You don't have to be a masterpiece, but you can be a masterpiece and a work in progress. But I guess um, sometimes it is hard to... to Let's, let, let's now come to the reality about life. Mm -hmm. There are those days that you don't even know who you are, right? But you know what makes you sad and you yeah, know what exactly. makes you happy. There, 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 are, there are scenarios that you, you find yourself mm. that um, if someone asks you who you are, it's so hard to even um, maybe um, introduce yourself 
to who you are because of the happenings. And that's why I said, if we have the awareness, if, if, if we, sent, we, we, we bring people into realization and understanding, then from there, now you'll understand. But there are people who doesn't even have a clue of what it is. It's they, they're just in a mixture of some feelings and all that. But if you, you ask them who they are, definitely I, I they wouldn't, are not. I wouldn't agree in this sense. Uh, you must know who you are. You must know who you are. That's the first step. That's what determines everything. That's where you draw the line. You know, this is who I am. This is what I'm willing to accept. This is what I'm not willing to accept. I'm not saying it has to be 100%. You must, like I said, you can be a work in progress, but a masterpiece. You must know the things. I don't need to, to punch you in the face for you to realize that you feel pain once I punch you in the face. And there is no perfect explanation of who you are. Stop looking for perfectionism in everything you do. But you can say, I am this person, I stand for this, and stand for it. That shows. That is your character. That is. No, what is the solution for the, for the people there no in that situation? There is no solution. There is no solution. There is no solution. That's yeah. looking for a cheat sheet to life. There is no cheat sheet to life. So what Grace is trying to say, mm. there are some days that maybe because of uh, a a couple of things that you've gone through, mm. then it gets harder maybe even to be confident enough to speak out. So then what about those days? Those okay. are, what I say, those, that, that's a very normal thing. Everyone experiences that. That's the, again, something you must accept. Everyone has those days. But this is not who you are. This does not define who you are as a person. You have bad days and you have good days. Those are very totally different things. So if, if, I can get, if I get you correctly, mm. you mean that we have to know what we stand for, there are these basic values about ourselves that need to guide us? I think you need to be able to exist in a society mm -hmm. without losing your social ethics or social skills. Mm -hmm. Just because you are angry doesn't mean that you need to make everyone else around you very angry. That's what I mean. Because you are having a bad day doesn't mean that everyone has to have a bad day. You understand? Okay. Because you're having a good day doesn't mean that everyone else is having a good day. That's being entitled to having a certain thing. But I'm saying you can be a work in progress. In your worst days, you need to know these are my worst days and this is who I am on my worst days. In your best days, you need to know these are my best days and this is who I am in my best days. Such that when you have your worst days, you're able to work through something so that you don't end up stuck in a place or in a position that you're not able to transition beyond. You can't decide to be angry for two, three weeks. If you're angry for two, three weeks, then you need to understand there's something wrong. Those are the avenues now I'm telling you. If for three weeks you are not able to sleep or you're sad for three weeks continuously mm -hmm. and nothing has happened or maybe you've experienced something traumatic, that is for you to also understand that you need to see someone. Those are signs that you need to see someone to assist you. I don't think you'd stay with a headache or migraine for three weeks and say, this is who I am. You understand? Like, my head hurts for. That's what I mean. Those are signs and symptoms that you need to seek help. Okay. And okay. within your circle also, you need to always have friends for different events. You need to have friends who are there when you're sad and they know. You need to have friends who can see you and say, today you're not okay. And these people either are able to be your source of comfort or they can guide you towards the right channel. When you are happy, you become also distractive, distractful. Like you, the, the, the people who, let me say, for instance, if you make a lot of money today and you just want to spend it, mm -hmm. that is how you experience your happiness. That is also something you need to check. Those are not normal behaviors. You need to stay in check. Things are not supposed to define you. Situations are not supposed to define you. But you need to always have your character standing at every point. Okay and be aware, self-awareness, yeah. and accept, and move. Okay, now we have to worry, I have something to say? Yeah, 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 I have, uh, I have something, yeah, I have something to say on concerning the way um, circumstances should not define you, or maybe you should keep on a constant check, right? Um, I'm, I'm just worried in uh, this group of people, you know, le let's say, with the mental health, there are people maybe who maybe started when they were very young. There may be things that happened maybe when they were two, three, four years, right? And maybe the, the way they've been brought up and the way they've experienced things, um, they're not in a position maybe to, to be like what she said. Maybe 
they can they can know this when when I'm this this is how I should go about it. Maybe this this someone who is blank on how to go about it. So from from her as as a, a maybe uh, with the experience in the field, maybe there's this one person, right? Mm. Maybe I'm a qua traumatized, maybe from young, maybe they have gone through molestation or maybe rape or something. Mm -hmm. what, how can you help such kind of a person? Like I said, uh, it's more around society. Remember mm. when you mm. said uh, mm. economics and I said it's around society. We need to take care of our own fasting first. And I think we've lost our moral values as a society, as long as I'm okay, it doesn't matter what happens to you. If you are an older person who's experienced uh, extreme trauma, molestation is rape, someone getting into a private space in whatever capacity mm, that makes right, you feel really uncomfortable, yeah. it's uh, a subject yeah, sure. that is very raw. Yeah, sure. It's very raw. This is someone, if they're old enough, these are people you tick through the process, see a counselor. Those, those are not things you explain to them. But we are a society that tells you if you're raped, how short was your dress, what yeah, were sure, you sure, wearing? Sure. That, that's what yeah, I'm telling yeah. you, it's more around society, that we have failed as a society. Okay. It's what were you wearing if you're in a gentleman's house? What were you doing? What were you doing? Yeah. Then there's these stories of he sent you 900,000. That is entitlement, that because you were wearing a short dress or you wore makeup or uh, you were in his house or he sent you 900,000. That's a reward system that is very defective, whereby we, 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 we also growing our girls telling them, if a man buys you alcohol, that means you need to go home with him. But the same same men are buying other men alcohol, but I've never seen a man tell another man, yeah, now let's go, go home because yeah. I bought you alcohol. Yeah. Okay. That's what I mean. Mm -hmm. As a society, we failed. For the people who are below 18 years, we need to be watch keepers of our children. We have created an environment whereby we're always working, always making money, always working, always making money. But the people who molest these people are people who are very close to home. There are cases same. that a total stranger would yeah. come after your child. Yeah. It's always, if you look at the news, it's always your husband, your boyfriend, the brother, the cousin, the uncle. You understand? Yeah. And we have societies within this country in 2021, when people are going to the moon, where a child is raped and uh, the parents are given goods. They said, and that is it. And it's but I think when it court. comes to mental health, Okay, um, we, we just need to move on yeah, so yeah. Okay. bring in the next topic. Yeah. I want us to talk about uh, the social media culture. Okay. And I know we, many of the times we've talked about how there's a lot of pressure. Mm. There's a lot of pressure from social media. But my, a very interesting angle is the bullying culture on social media. Because, uh, I don't know, it, it amazes me. Because from the way different personalities are bullied, then it says something about us as a people. You have seen this. Yeah. We know yesterday Betty Kello <laughs> is trending and she's being trolled. Yeah. Then Kamene Goro was trending and she's being trolled. And you look at these comments, some comments you laugh at, and then some comments you're like, wow, like this is so dark. So who sits behind a computer to write this? We must be a society that is in so much pain. Well, uh, very, when it comes sad. to social media bully, um, about the mental health, um, I think um, in this generation is a generation that we've put our life like an open book. Like the way you've woken up, everybody will know you've woken up, you've taken this breakfast, you're going to this place, and this is the episode that you're going to do. And um, when it comes to some of the bullies, um, it comes from your inner circle. Those are the people who understand you, they know your emotions, they know the way you do things. And they're the same, same people who go behind. And, and so many people, I think they've really gone down through the social media bully. And um, maybe, maybe they, will, they will, like ladies, you know, we, we always have, um, I mean, our self-esteem when it comes to maybe your, your physical features. Maybe when you're too big, or maybe you're too small or anything that is off about you they will take it from there and they will go with it 
and it and that one i think it has crushed so many people like so many artists or so many um politicians they have they have gone down because of the social media so i think um um we, when it comes to social media most of the times um maybe you have to keep your key low sometimes mm -hmm. because if your keys are low then so many people will not understand who you are and maybe they will not understand maybe who, there, 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 there are some people who maybe they are known people but they, have, they will never even know their families they have kept their families as a secret because the more you update people on what you do on who you are they take it from there the ammunition now. yes they take and they will go with it and and because you all have feelings you cannot withstand that and it's really taking people down and i think um i don't know how to address it but something needs to be done okay. because with the social media right now everything is going messy because if people need to bring you down in one minute or ten minutes they use social media because now that one will spread very fast and mm -hmm you'll be done in a minute. So I think we really need to even minimize how the, the things we do. Because something that you said 10 years in social media, let's, let's say like the people who want to be, yeah, yeah, they want to become a president. Whatever you said 20 years ago, that's what they are going to bring from the dead it was, and it is going to be used against you, and you not even like it. Okay. Yeah. And Dorothy, My, before you weigh in on the same, I understand we do have to take a very short break. Okay. We're taking a short break here on The Big Idea, but we'll be back. There's so much more conversation on the other side of the break. Grow your business, broadcast your sermon, share birthday wishes, make funeral announcements, produce adverts and documentaries, then book and advertise with us today by calling us on plus 254 700 893 542. 700 893 542. Or email us on sales at look up.tv. Health Check in association with Natural Juicing Center. Importance of fruits. Fruits are an excellent source of essential vitamins and minerals, and they are high in fiber. Fruits also provide a wide range of health-boosting antioxidants, including flavonoids. Eating a diet high in fruits and vegetables can reduce a person's risk of developing heart disease, cancer, inflammation, and diabetes. Health Check in association with Natural Juicing Center. You can now book for any service or order for food supplements on our website www.naturaljuicingcenter.co.ke You can also visit our center in Kahawasukari, house number 1334, Kahawasukari Avenue. Natural Juicing Center. Your health is your wealth. Like Follow, subscribe, click the notification button. Join the Look Up TV movement now. 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 Welcome back. Thank you so much for staying with Look Up TV. The hashtag is Big Idea. Nancy and Lima here, and the conversation we have in studio today is the worrying trend of mental health in the country. And with me on set to discuss this issue further is Grace Tukur, to a consultant, and Dorothy Kemunter, a psychologist. With over 400 cases of suicide between June and August, this is indeed a very worrying trend, and that is why we have to talk about these issues. Where do they stem from? Let's break it down for you. Tune in. The SMS number is 20374. Tell me what you think about the mental state in Kenya right now. How can we address these challenges? And you can also engage with me on social at Look Up TV on Twitter, Look Up TV on Facebook. Now, ladies, let's continue the conversation. So just before the break, we're talking about the bullying culture. And Dorothy, as I bring you in, we are a society that has bullied the president out of Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, Kamani Matusi, Jimmy Gates, 
gospel artist. He was bullied to the point of suicide. This is people behind these computers, behind these phones. These are people who are experiencing a lot of pain. Because for you to met that on other people, that means there's something within you. Maybe you can talk to us about that, Dorothy. Uh, we lack social skills. We feel like we need to over-express ourselves and tell it like it is attitude. But I think when you exist in a society, you need to be a bit more respectful about what you say and who your target is. But I think, um, adding on to what she had said earlier around uh, people just posting anything, if I do open my social media pages, I'm allowed to post what I feel like I need to post. It doesn't open like a room for you to be entitled to tell me how you feel about me, how I look today. Mm -hmm. It doesn't give you that permission, but the fact that you actually think it gives you that permission, it says there's something very wrong so with So that is actually with, with the problem. Brain. That is the problem. Mm -hmm. That has nothing. And I think we need to understand whatever people want to spill on social media, all the venom has very little to do with me as a person or me as in my account yeah. and a lot to do with you as a person. Mm -hmm. I don't feel why you'd feel the need to tell me I'm fat. I know I'm fat. The need to tell me that my eyes are big. I know my eyes are big. Those are facts. And it's not something I'd change. The social media influencers uh, or creators that we have in this country, they want to create a perfect image. And when they are attacked on the message they're creating, and then there are a lot of question marks. We have people on radio who advertise heavily on uh, people going to Naivasha and have a good time. And the same same people on Monday were the people who are now Jesus crucifying, eh? saying you shouldn't have done this, you should have done this. But if you listen to them a week earlier, that the people who are saying we need to go and do this, we need to go and do this. So when people get there and do that, you come back again. The same people who are saying they're being crucified are the same people who are crucifying people. So for them, I think it's a complete cycle. What you do will come back to you. But I don't agree with, uh, with, 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 with people bullying people online. Mm -hmm. And I think when you go online, you must have tough skin. If our president bowed out, mm. that's also an option for everyone. And uh, we have options like block. We have TikTok where you can block comments. But I think, again, we want to, to reach a million followers, a million. And with that... <laughs> comes a lot of responsibility. Mm -hmm. So um, I think the social media creators and influencers need also an avenue. They need uh, counselors, they need psychologists. I think they need PR teams who read those things. I don't think you need to even sit down and keep reading. Like uh, Safaricom has a great PR team. You can see the responses yeah. they give yeah. back and yeah. they don't care. Yeah. So sometimes if, if your skin is not tough enough, and then I think sometimes you need to engage professionals, people who are as cold as these other people who are cold. Because it's business, and I think people are really interfering with people's source of income. Because there are people on social media to make an income. And if you're there to make an income, it comes with a lot of sick people. Mm -hmm. People who are very entitled to tell you what they think about you. And they don't know you. They don't know what you've been through. They don't know what you're going through. Some people post things they did a year ago. You feel like... They're there. And I think we also have a problem that we're obsessed with people. We have to be like these people. And we, we have crazy role models online. Right now, I look at the role models. I pray for people who have daughters and sons, but uh, they, they be the right mo role models for their children and stop giving these social media role models to their children. Because okay. those people are in need for the business. And those people are not concerned about the well-being of your children. So if you're going to allow your child to follow this person as their role model, then it says a lot again about you as a parent and very little about the role model. Because you can't let your child follow a certain character and start telling that character you are a role model to my children. That's a form of bullying. Okay. But it's you who's, we need to question. Yeah. How then should we handle that social media space because it's, it's very vital. We, we business, mm. even our 
our programs are being streamed live mm -hmm. on Twitter, on Facebook, on YouTube. So it is a very important platform, mm -hmm. but again, it's causing a lot of harm. I think the country needs to focus on uh, the legislation of uh, social media. Uh, I know like in the US they have uh, a law around revenge porn, like whereby if mm -hmm. you do what people have been doing, you'll be sued and you'll pay. You can't do that to people. You can't take people in their most vulnerable state and just post it because you feel like you want to post it or you're entitled to posting it. I think the legislation needs to come in and these allowables and there are People need to be held to account. If you have, you feel you have the right to tell me how I feel and I feel the way I feel and I decide to take you to small courts and claim emotional trauma. Actually, you're supposed to pay for my counseling sessions because you are the source of my problem. Mm -hmm. So the legislation needs to wake up and do something mm -hmm. about it. Yes, Grace, as you're raising your daughter, the, and she's coming into a world that is social media heavy. Yeah. So then, how do you approach it? Because you know the damage that it can cause. It has a lot of good, yeah. but the damage, again, can be very fatal. Yeah. Um, first thing first um, is that uh, we cannot assume social media. Because um, for now, for you to, to do a lot of progress in whatever you do, social media has to come in. But as for me, as a parent who is raising a daughter, and um, I think um, the, the, the kids right now, they get to know social media when they are not even five. Mm. And they can really operate and they know how it goes. So the only thing you can do is, you have to tell them as it is, black and white. You just tell them, um, if you need to use it, this is the maximum that you need to go. And if you go this way, now these are the consequences. Because I think as parents, we really let our children who are, are, are even um, are as young as five to really mess up with themselves with the social media. Because we've let them without telling them, hey, if you do this, these are the consequences of this. And then good morals. Let's instill good morals to our children. And if anything happens, let them carry the cross. We don't need to be the one telling them to do the wrong things and then we still want to, 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 to uh, I mean, to cover up. Tell them the truth. If you're of this age, this is the far that you should go. And if you go beyond this, these are the consequences. And sometimes because you're not at home, you're, you're out there doing th things and you cannot be all the time there to control. But if you instill good morals, they'll grow knowing, hey, I think... This, the, you know kids, they don't do what you tell them. They do what they you see do. you doing. So if you're doing the right thing, then it's, they always do copy-paste. They do what we do. So as, as grown-up, they, they, if, 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 for instance, they, they, they go into, they are, they are these maybe under, under 12 and they have a Facebook account. And maybe they'll come with a pseudo and if you not even know, you accept their friend request. And the things that you, maybe you post, they are shit. Mm -hmm. And what do you expect from them? So as as a society, as as the parents, let's be a good example. Let's lead our kids into the right way. And all these shenanigans and all these things, maybe it won't be as bad as it is. Let it, let's tell them the way it is and... I guess it won't as be as bad as... Mm -hmm. yeah. I think so, I'd like to just add a little bit to what you've said. Okay. Um, as much as you want to control the content your child is able to access, you can't control the content of what your neighbor's child is able to access. And this child is going to interact with the other children. And that's why I said, again, you need to have very open conversations with your, your, your children, for instance. They need to understand that your house is an open space. Your child should be able to ask you topics that make you uncomfortable. Yeah, sure. And you should be able to give your children in biteable pieces information that a child can comprehend. Don't give too much that a child can't comprehend or too little that your child is left disadvantaged. I think you understand what I mean. Yeah, yeah, sure. You need to give them information and you need to let your children lead in the conversation because these children are very intelligent. Children are very, very intelligent. Children are very sharp. Before we start instilling things in them, they already know and they understand this. So you need to be even more open. You and uh, whoever, the, the, the influence within your child space 
need to have candid conversation and sometimes you just need to sit and listen to the children talk. Then you will learn. And if you're not able again to address it, if it scares you, that's why we have aunties, cousins, or we have your mother or some, someone can be able to approach it. But we can't okay. like force our ideas on uh -huh. children. Yeah. Yeah. And, and we, we can do that now to the children who are growing up. Yes. And what about us as adults? We've grown up in a society that was a little closed out. We didn't have many open conversations. Yeah, sure. There's still some things that are a bit uncomfortable to talk about. There's still some things we cannot just sit down and talk with our parents, even with our own siblings. Yeah. So now that we're here, how do we go about it? Because we still need safe spaces so we can express ourselves. I think we need to, like I said, be self-aware. There is nothing that cannot be discussed on the table. The moment you say that I cannot have this discussion with my parent, you've already blocked. Mm -hmm. And that means your feelings will block another person from accessing this information. Sometimes it's good to be candid and crude because your parents, it's their role to make sure that you turn out right. It's their job, it's their primary to make sure that they push out a decent human being into society because you're going to coexist with the rest of society. Us as a group right now, I think there are a lot of um, projects, like uh, people who are incomplete. When mm -hmm. I say projects, that's yeah. what I mean. And I think I come from a generation whereby we're told, for instance, my gender, this age, you're supposed to have this number of children. No, that's a form of abuse. People just don't realize it. You're supposed to have children, you're supposed to be a good wife, you're supposed to be, you're supposed to be. So there's this whole societal expectations or rules and regulation being imposed on you, but they don't tell you exactly how. And when you look around, there's no right role model, like something you can see and you mm -hmm. want to emulate. But again, my generation is a generation that is privy to a lot of information online. I think there's no generation that can access information the way we can access information. We have a generation whereby if you can even Google symptoms. The funny thing is everything turns out to be cancer. Yeah. Even if it's, mm -hmm. yeah. it doesn't make sense. Yeah. But I think even if you right, need like the right doctor, information is there. If you need whatever you need, we have access to that. But me as a friend to my friends, um, my responsibility is to create like an environment whereby my friends feel safe enough to discuss with me whatever they are going through. Mm -hmm. If I'm not able to solve it, then I can refer them to someone who can resolve. But the solutions are always within you. That's what I said, 99%. You know what you need to do. It's like when you say, for instance, let me go back to her. When she said she just ate, 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 ate because she was sad. Yeah. She just knew she needed to stop eating. You understand? Mm -hmm. Or go and exercise or just find another avenue to. It's you. Know. That's not something that you need to go to a professional to tell you. Now you need to stop eating. You understand? <laughs> That's what I mean. Yeah. But we do have access to information and we, we can work on it if we need to. And I don't okay. think my generation is the generation that conforms. I think my generation is the generation that is, I think you're part of this generation and mm -hmm. the next one. We are, we are people who are breaking records and we are doing things that the past generation didn't do. True. So we can't limit ourselves again to mm -hmm. what was there in the past. Yes. Okay, and uh, even as we... Are almost concluding, I just want to, to list three different examples. There was uh, that depressed Nairobi doctor who took her own life in the parking lot. She was called Wahura by injecting herself with anesthesia. And then there's another example, uh, a land court judge by the name Mary Gitumbi, who has been suspended from office by the president and pending mental assessment. So there's a task force that has been formed to as assess her mental state, see if she's actually fit for the job. So, and the reason I'm stating such examples is because different people from different sectors. So when we say money can be a challenge, then here, this is not the case here. So they're different courses and it cuts across different people. So mental health is an issue of the society. It's not for specific people. It's not just for the people who are, say, maybe physically impaired or financially challenged. So it is an issue that is cutting across everyone. So even as you conclude, what is your idea 
I'll, I'll start with you, Grace. What is your idea of making steps to address this issue, like real steps? How do we approach it? Where do we start? Um, um, number one is that uh, we must, all of us, we must accept that there's a need for a conversation about mental health. And um, when there's a conversation going, um, even those people who didn't feel like they need to speak out, they come on board. Because um, when, 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 when we give people a room to express what they feel, and we, we really need to put stigma aside, because there's always some things you feel like, if I speak about this, then everyone fear about their consequences. And that's what escalates for things to get into the bad state that they get. So first thing first is that we, we accept there's, there's a problem. And when there's a problem, what are the measures that we need to take? And um, I think it, it needs to be like the way there's, there's always awareness of other diseases and everything else that is disturbing the society. I think the most important thing for everyone, if you're not stable mentally, then it is the cause of other, you are not, uh, if your mind is not stable, then there's nothing else that you can do right. So I think uh, as, as an individual or else as a group of people or even the government, they should take this as, as something very serious that needs to be addressed. And especially at this time, it's a worrying trend that is really, really affecting people. And another thing, we should, we should not make people feel indebted, like when they express their feelings and the things they are going through. Let, let's give people platforms. And, okay, we, 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 let, let's, for instance, when you go to where children are, you need to, to go to, I mean, you behave like them. I mean, you, if it's a conversation to the youth, you don't need kwenda kwa youth and then you want to behave like uh, maybe your sixties or something. When you go to a specific group of people, it's, a, it's where you can be able to fit. We and you be very relatable. Yeah, and yeah. when people feel comfortable with you, then they can be able to open up. But when, 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 when like let's say for youths, let's be close to them. And let give them avenues. Let let tell them it is good to speak out. When there's something that is pressing you, it is good to speak out. You don't need to speak to your parents. There's somebody else that you trust that you can speak out. And when you speak out, then the generation will be healed. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. And Dorothy, before I let you give us your big idea of how we can approach this issue, last year's... Um, day marking the day of mental awareness the campaign was increased investment in mental health for greater access and we know that finances seeing counselors psychologists that is always a big issue because it involves money a lot I'm yeah money. and you know once someone is not bedridden like their stomach is hurting, <laughs> then they don't believe. Uh, well, you're yeah. not sick. Yes, then you're not sick. So <laughs> you cannot. Don't go and use some 2,500 consultation yeah. and you're not ailing, like you're not in physical pain. So again, finances, even as you conclude. I think um, in this country, it's not just mental health that is exorbitant. Mm -hmm. Like the pricing does not make sense. It's, it's not just around the mental health. Um, we need to put more money into mental health, but exactly how, that is the question, because it's still a very foreign subject. We need to separate spiritual, mental, and physical. We live in a country whereby when, when you're going through trauma, you go to your pastor or your priest, to counsel mm -hmm. you. If you're having marital issues, you go to your best man because you don't want to invest in yourself. If you're told today you have cancer, even if you don't have money, you're going to do everything to make sure that you're okay. And everything starts with the, your mental health. I think it even surpasses your hands, like the effectiveness of you being able to function properly. Mm -hmm. We need to give it a priority. If you look at spending on your mental health as, as wasting money, 
again, you still need mental counseling. Because <laughs> another problem. It's just a very big problem with you. Because you need to be sane for you to operate. And you have to spend whatever it costs to make you feel okay. And mental health is not just for the rich people. Mental health affects everyone, the poor, all of us. Everyone is affected in one way or another. We have our emotions. Our family have the emotions. Our friends have the emotions. That, that is just a whole space that we need to get into. And it's not necessarily that I have to give my problems to my parents. You understand? Okay. If I'm sick, my mother won't treat my stomach. I have to see a doctor. So if my state of mind is not right, then I need to see the right person. We cannot look at it as wastage of money. It is exorbitant. I think the prices can get lower. But uh, we have institutions like Madare where people don't want to go to because it's lowly and it's mm -hmm. for the mad people. Mm -hmm. But when the need comes, then you need to go there. It's one of the most affordable hospitals. And we do have, I'm not marketing the hospital, but I'm saying Madare does exist. And I think in every hospital there is actually a space for psychiatrists and psychologists. I think we need to make it easier that uh, you can actually easily go and see a psychiatrist yeah. or psychologist. Even people with insurance, I know they're suffering because you have to be referred. But I don't think you need a third person to tell you that your mind is not in the right state, that you need to go and get something done. I think it's something if you feel like your mental state is not okay. The first world does it. They have mental days. You have three days off the whole year to just go and say it's a mental day so that you replenish. The brain needs replenishment. Okay. We need to stop looking for perfectionism and we need to start dealing with failure in a very conscious manner. Because your brain is not right doesn't mean that you are crazy. And it's okay to be crazy. That's just a sign of there is a lot of imbalance in you. Yeah. It can be reversed. You can be treated. It is okay not to be okay. It's okay not to be okay. Yeah. It's okay to cry if you need to cry. It's okay to say I'm not okay. And I think even within the workforce or the work environment, yeah. we're not very conversant when it comes to mental health. I know you can't go and tell your boss, like, eh, I'm, my, today I'm not feeling this type of way. Because you can't explain that. You still need to have a forum whereby you're able to express. Okay. All places, schools need counseling rooms where the children are not traumatized. Most of the counselors in primary and secondary schools, there is wanting training there. Mm -hmm. Every institution, even churches, a pastor, unless you've gone to school and you've gone through training of being a counselor, you have no business counseling people. Okay. If you don't have that training to understand this is what is causing, everything cannot be solved by religion or money or, you understand? Mm -hmm. Like if you are fat, you go to the gym. If your head is not okay, you go to a psychiatrist or psychologist. If you have cancer, you go and see the right person. So let's attribute the right things to the right people. And yes, we do need to spend money. And there are things like bipolar d diseases yeah. that uh, people have that you can't explain. Those people need to be treated better. Okay. Yes. Okay, thank you so much. Dorothy Kemonto, yes. psychologist, and Grace Tukur, tour consultant. And let us keep the conversation going on social media. And just you can tell me what your idea is of addressing the challenges of mental health in the country right now, the very worrying trend with over 400 cases reported of suicide in just less than three months and so much more worrying cases of violence, police brutality. There is a lot of pain around. Let me know what you feel about it using the SMS number 20374 at LookUpTV on Twitter and LookUpTV on Facebook. I am Nancy Nalima. Thank you so much for watching. We value your feedback and welcome your complaints about our programming and operations. Feel free to get in touch with us through 0700-893-542 or send us an email to views at look-up.tv. We can't wait to hear from you.